Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location. And Kim was back at it again yesterday. I was off the grid, so I, I couldn't do anything. No naughty adventures, I assure you. I'm on my best behavior this weekend. I'm not happy about it, but, you know, it happens to the worst of us. I think Ben will be by here to see see Kim. Also, Kim recently called me from jail. I put a link to that in the description below. Also, I want to give a shout out to our Nevada judges who made all this happen. Link to their video in the description below. Oh, I haven't I haven't done the I haven't done the link the link fingers in a while. And uh, I don't know. I haven't even seen this. I kind of know what it contains because it was all over my comments. So let's 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 get her started, shall we? We'll talk about some law stuff. You go first. Okay, um, sit down. <clears throat> Your Honor, um, Mr. Blandino, against my advice, would like to testify. State versus Blandino, case C341767. He's present in custody. The attorneys can make their appearances. Mike Dickerson, on behalf of the state, Your Honor. Barnable 13476. Morning, Your Honor. Joseph Gerson, 138876. Okay, thank you very much. I did, um, I did get a copy of your declaration, and it will be. Um, you didn't send an order to seal it, but I will order that it be sealed. You know, and here's the deal. I don't want you to think that I think any now? of this is okay or condone any of it. I think it's it's outrageous. I mean, the funk. I, I, but here's the thing. It's not unique to you. He will do that to any lawyer that the court appoints. Mr. Bateman you know, file the motion to withdraw almost immediately. So I know what why he's doing it is to impede and obstruct the court. I object to so, that. That's absolutely not true. So um, I'm going to deny the motion to withdraw, and um, you'll continue to um, represent him. But here's the thing. You are permitted to put boundaries and rules in place. If he cannot speak respectfully to your staff, then tell your staff not to take his phone calls. And then that will be his problem if he can't get through to you, because I do not believe that your staff or you should have to take any type of, of verbal abuse. I did and not do any of that. This is outrageous, Judge. And the, you have no the basis phone call, this is unfounded allegations. And the phone call to the jail is literally beyond. And I'm assuming that the jail and the CEOs have taken appropriate action pursuant I, I, to that. I don't know, but I hope so. I, I, I don't know Am I allowed to see this document where these allegations are being made or not? I'll decide when we're done with the hearing. Listen, um, I, want, okay. I have the right to know what the nature of these proceedings are. I know there's a motion to imprison me. I have the right yeah. to know my rights in these proceedings. Am I going to be allowed to testify or to sure. refuse to testify? Sure. It is, if this is a probation have revocation the right to hearing. Testify or refuse to testify. That's correct. If this is a, a, a motion uh, to revoke probation, or I mean uh, a, a parole, a probation revocation hearing, then I'm entitled to know what I'm being charged with violating which conditions. I, and I have been served with nothing. As far as I know, counsel, uh, my uh, counsel that's being forced upon me here has not been served with anything. That's what uh, 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 Specialist Duque, I spot, talked to Duque for 30 minutes on two separate occasions. And she said that no one has been served with a probation violation report. And, and Your Honor, that is true. Uh, we have not received any violation reports. Um, one was filed with the court, and we can't access. I can't access it. It's a sealed document. Or something. I will make sure you get a copy of it. And, and I need to make a record here. Gagnon versus okay, you are Gallagher. not going to make a record. You're represented by counsel, so there's no need to there make a no record. There is no right to counsel at a probation revocation hearing. That's clear. Gagnon versus Scarnelli, 
93 Supreme Court. You've been denied the right to represent yourself. Those are wrong, Judge. Yep. You guys can't hear me or see me? That's just the internet I've got. Oh, okay, sure. So if, if, if he is representing me and he's being forced to represent me, why can't I consult with him right now? I can give him some pertinent information. You can. You can. Well, can I go by his side or can he come over here? Uh, do you want him to sit at council table with you? Honestly, Judge, it's, it's your courtroom, whatever you would. If you'd rather me go over here, I, no I don't know how I can assist him from oh, here. Sir, do you mind? Okay, he can like sit that. at council table yes. with Mr. Yeah, that's fine. Can I have one arm free from these cups so that I can write properly? Mr. Um, Dickerson, you have a coffee, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Marshall, here's a coffee. But Ben's supposed to come by, but honestly, I'm not sure. I sent him a link, and I I am struggling with uh, with an old computer and and the Wi-Fi in this place. I, I don't know if it'll happen. I really want it to because I wanted to see Ben's uh, Schadenfreude from uh, <laughs> from watching somebody else deal with Mr. Blandino. She just denied. I understand that. But she's not going to proper inquiry. You need to make a record on this job. But she's violating the rules of state. If I may, Your Honor. Sure. My client has asked that I make a record that you are violating the only versus state and not conducting an appropriate inquiry as to the communication between my client and I. So I want that to be on the record, please. It's on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Is is a probation violation report? Can we see this? If I'm going to take the stand, I have to know what I'm going to do about. Oh, one other thing. Under, under, uh, because there's parallel proceedings going in the Justice Court. Mr. Bland, you know, go ahead and read the report because we're going to begin. Under so take the time now, or else we're just going to start. Okay. Yeah, it is the first opportunity I've had to look at this. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like it mirrors the and justice. Please don't quality. read it out loud. Just yeah. read it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dickerson, you have your witnesses here. I do, Your Honor. That report has been done and sent to him. He sure didn't. I I put a link Your to Honor, my. Small my attempt to help him in the description. Um, obviously, Mr. Blandino, for the, the reasons that he's here, there's a parallel proceeding occurring in uh, Justice uh, Court Department 2 with Judge Sassento. So we would object to moving forward on this under a due process argument as it is a parallel proceeding. It's already going. He has a Fifth Amendment right in that proceeding. He has a right to a preliminary hearing and all of those reasons that this particular hearing is uh, un untimely. It may be appropriate at a later date, but until that is determined, I believe uh, he should have the opportunity to defend himself in that matter before this matter proceeds. What, what charges were filed in Justice Court? Because <clears throat> I know there were there were traffic there were three, citations. Your Honor. There were three charges. Okay. It was failure to have a driver's license. Uh, failure for registration, uh, you know, not having registration, and the third, which is really the reason we're here today, is the possession of documents purporting a false identity. Do we have that right, Mr. Dickerson? That's right. And uh, to note, Your Honor, pursuant to uh, Cooper v. State, that's uh, one three four Nevada three nine nine uh, from two thousand and eighteen. 
the probation revocation hearing and the testimony that the defendant will give is in this against him in those other proceedings. So he has his full rights here. There's, there's no issue. <laughs> I agree with counsel on that. I found that case myself, Cooper versus State, only for right. impeachment so or rebuttal purposes. Do you oppose purposes. a continuance until afterwards? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, allow the state to proceed today. But Mr. Blandino, you understand that anything you testify to in this hearing um, cannot be used against you in your other cases in justice. It, except for impeachment or rebuttal under Cooper versus State. That's 134 okay. Nevada 399. Well, then you already years. know. So. Yeah. All right. Um, Only those are limited ready purposes. to call the first witness. Um, I, I, no, I just want to make sure yeah, oh yeah, that sure. you had an opportunity to read the report and all that. I'll, I'll, I'll. Okay, you're going to have a seat. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. See you Peterson. Too. Absolutely. Thank you. You may you call your first witness. We'll call Officer Martinez. Thank you. Oh, good Lord. What is this? What is this one going to say? You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this action mm -hmm. shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. You may be seated. Please state and spell your first and last name of the record. First name is Cynthia. That's C-Y-N-T-H-I-A. Last name, Martinez. M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z. Thank you, Rob. How are you employed, ma'am? I'm not Witness with security. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And what's your assignment? I'm a patrol officer. I work downtown. Okay. Were you working in that capacity as a police officer in downtown for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department on September 21st, sorry, September 16th, 2022? Yes, that's correct. I apologize, Your Honor. I really do. Uh, Mr. Blandino is requesting have all the hands free to write. I don't. We get asked. I don't know what your what your thought on that is. Well, the officer is indicating. Uh, that's against our policy. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I I like that. His attorney's just like, yeah. He asked me to say this, so I'm saying it. I, I don't care how you rule on it, but there there it is. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, around uh, seven forty six p.m. that evening. Uh, did a call or a uh, action, police action occur, which brings you here to testify today? Yes, a traffic stop. And can you tell the court about that traffic stop and how it originated? Uh, my partner and I were traveling eastbound on Bonanza. We observed a white Ram truck on the yeah. westbound lanes Thank on you. Bonanza, just east of Bruce. Uh, they stopped, the truck was stopped at close to an, the, an intersection and the driver was outside of the truck trying to get the attention of the driver in the number three lane. So we thought that was a bit odd uh, to stop in the middle of the roadway. We conducted a stop for stop stand park um, where it prohibited. So do you see that the person who was associated with that Dodge Ram truck here in the courtroom today? Yes, that's correct. If you could please identify that person and uh, indicate by pointing and identifying the police's clothing. Uh, yes, the male on the navy blue shirt. Okay, the record could reflect the identification of the defendant here. Shall we find it? And so to understand this correctly, uh, I the do miss Dodge the Ram time. truck that was actually parked in a travel lane. Yes, in the number two lane. Okay, and the defendant, Mr. Blandino, was standing outside of that truck oh, with, in a travel lane as well. Correct, he was uh, beside the driver's side of the car in the number three lane. And what was he doing? He was waving his arms, it appeared like he, he was waving his arms, it appeared like he was trying to get the attention of the driver in that car. His arms were very animated. Um, when he saw us, he quickly got into his truck and began westbound again on the other side. Okay. Uh, and uh, so he enters that Dodge Ram truck once he sees you guys? 
Yes. And are you wearing uniform and in a marked patrol vehicle? Yes, that's correct. And at that point in time, did you happen to see the license plate of the truck? Yes, the truck had a Montana license plate on it. Okay. And so at that point in time, did you conduct a traffic stop on Mr. Blandino in that Dodge Ram? Yes. And then what occurred? I made contact with him on the driver's side. My partner made contact on the passenger side. I advised him the reason for the stop. Um, I asked for his registration, his license, proof of insurance. Um, I asked why he stopped in the middle of the roadway. Because it's unreasonable to stop in the middle of the roadway. And, and uh, is there anything at, during this particular initial contact that you and your partner or and or your partner noticed about uh, the defendant's truck? Yes, um, my, we noticed that the ignition was tampered with or removed and there was a screwdriver in it. Okay, like a screwdriver for the key? Correct. Okay. Uh, and did Mr. Blandino provide you any uh, identification? He did. He identified himself with an Arizona ID. Okay. And was that uh, in the name of Kim Blandino? Yes. Uh, did you take a look at that ID? Yes. Was it a driver's license? No, it was an identification card. And so what if any response did you have? I asked him if he had a driver's license because he was driving on a public roadway. And he told me that he had an international driver's license. Okay. And what did he do in response to telling you that he had an international driver's license? As he was telling me that he had an international driver's license, he was rummaging closer to like the passenger side as if he was going to grab it to show me. Is there, was there a glove box over there in the passenger Good Lord, side? Kim, you really did. Yes. And was that the area that he was rummaging towards? Yes. Um, the car itself, just having noticed that it was, the ignition was punched and it was started with a screwdriver, uh, what, if anything, does that tell you in your training experience, just to inform you on the stop going forward? Based on my training and experience, um, having a tampered with or removed ignition and using a screwdriver to maneuver in that vehicle is indicative of a stolen vehicle. Um, did Mr. Blandino show you how he uses the screwdriver to start the vehicle? Yes. Uh, was were you able to determine whether Mr. Blandino had any driver's license at all? Like an actual real driver's license that gave him a license to drive on public roadways? No. Objection to the term real. That was an objection that uh, Kim made. Did Mr. Blandino tell you that he was on to. probation? <laughs> but he did. Yes. And did you confirm that with a record check? Yes. Uh, did you also confirm his address with a record check? It's 441 North 16th Street? Yes. Here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada? Yes. Uh, did you also discover that Mr. Blandino had multiple priors for driving without a license? Yes. Over decades? That's correct. Was, during this stop, did you make contact with uh, any other officers or detectives? Yes, I made contact with Detective Mead and Detective Scheiber, I believe. Scheiber? Yes. I think he's on his uh, way. Did they respond to your traffic stop? Yes. Okay. Ultimately, uh, was Mr. Blandino arrested? Yes. And what was he arrested for? He was arrested for driving without a valid driver's license, mm -hmm. for not registering the vehicle within 30 days of residency, as well as the uh, the documents. 
Was it the false status documents? Correct. Okay. Um, ultimately, uh, his car is searched and those documents are recovered. His vehicle was towed and we conducted an inventory. Okay. Uh, was Mr. Blandino's vehicle also uh, parked illegally? Yes. Where was it parked? Objection. Objection. That's I, not an issue. You mean when he pulled over? Yeah. Did issue for. He's, he's not charged with uh, illegal parking. It, it, It goes to the overall circumstances okay. of the case. She can answer. Part of his truck was in a red zone. Well, that's, okay. that, that's not a thing. Uh, red zone <laughs> being that that's a fire zone. <laughs> I was okay. muted. Sorry. And it was not registered uh, to be on public roadways. I can't hear you, Ben. It, it might be on my end. I, I, nothing is working. I thought it was registered. It was just Montana. Yeah. So he, he wasn't registered. He didn't have a driver's license, right? Correct. And then is there, uh, based upon his history, was that one of the things taken into account as to why he was arrested in addition to the felony charge? Yes. Okay. Seriously, I sound like a robot too? I, I can't hear you at all, Ben. If if you guys can't hear me and all this, I might just close this down. I I, I mean, I guess I guess the video quality is horrible as well. All right, you, you can you can hear me. All right, well let's let's just go and we'll we'll see if uh, if Ben can adjust somehow. I don't know. I don't know how because I don't even know if it's your fault, Ben. We all want we all wanted to see you uh, enjoy <laughs> poor attorney Gersten's uh, plight. This sounds better. Talk. No. No. No dice. Well, well, I hear you. You sound like uh, Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, ultimately, the inventory search occurs, is that right? Yes. Um, and specific documents are impounded as a result? Yes. Okay. Um, those particular documents uh, were impounded by you and your partner? Yes. And did you have an opportunity to see those? Yes. Okay. Try it with just the device uh, and, mic, no, uh, no headphones. Was it ultimately the detectives who had recovered those in the inventory search? Yes. Okay. Stay with us, witness. Huh? Officer, uh, Mr. Blandino was at a red light when you came upon him, correct? I can't confirm that. Oh, oh, you're a you're a patrol officer, correct? That's okay. And, and you decided to make a stop of someone you thought was doing something incorrect, correct? You, you thought he was doing something wrong, right? Correct. And you can't tell me whether or not you know he was at a red light or not? Well, I was traveling eastbound. He was traveling westbound. So at some point he was at a red light, but when the light was green because there was another car that went by, he was still stopped. In okay. Lane. But it's you don't know when you saw him, whether he was at a red light or not, correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're down to. You said you spoke to him, you saw a, a, a screwdriver and some other things guys. look in the car. I'm doing the best I can, I really am. You found out that he owns that car, correct? That's correct. Okay, and he uh, adequately explained to you why he was using a screwdriver, correct? He had an explanation. 
Okay. And it was his car, correct? Yes. It wasn't stolen, is what I'm trying to say, right? That's correct. Okay. And you said he was rummaging in the passenger compartment, correct? Yes. Okay. Was he rummaging in the glove box? I don't know. You don't know? I do not know. Weren't you observing him? I was observing him, but I couldn't see all the way inside of the truck. Okay. At any point, I'm sorry, and then the, 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 the vehicle was impounded and it was searched. Right? We conducted an inventory. Okay. And some documents were found. I'm not sure if it was either by you or Detective Mead or somebody else, correct? It was from someone else. Okay. Did Mr. Blandino at any point ever hand you false documents? No. Did he ever present them to you in any way, shape, or form? No. Okay. And why was Detective Mead brought to the scene on this particular case? After conducting a records check, um, I, he was advised of, there was a notification. Why? I do not know. So you're a patrol officer. How long have you been on the force? Uh, a little shy of three years. Three years. You know how to do a traffic stop, right? Yes. Why did you have to call Detective Me? Thank you. Like I said, after conducting a records check, uh, there was a notification to contact. There was a notification in the system to contact Detective Me if Mr. Blandino was encountered? Yes. Okay. Nothing further. Can you read that? So, Defense counsel asked you about it being Mr. Blandino's car. Uh, is that because Mr. Blandino told you it was his car? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you ever do any sort of check to see how he acquired that vehicle? No. Other than looking at the registration and confirming the VIN on the registration and the VIN on the vehicle, no. I don't okay. know how he acquired it. And so you don't know whether there was ever actually a lawful transfer of that property to Mr. Blandino? Uh, to your honor, uh, objection. What if I, I, I don't know what he's trying to prove. Well, she's, already, she's already testified it wasn't a stolen vehicle. What is, is, he, what is the objection? What? what is it? What is the objection? Okay, what is the objection? Let's just, let's just calm down. Is it relevant? Ooh, I'm wondering why it, it would even be relevant. Just as it relates to his uh, line of questioning on that, your honor. You can answer. Can you repeat the question? Uh, were you able to determine whether there was a lawful transfer of that vehicle to Mr. Blandino? No. Okay. So you don't know how he acquired that? No. Okay. Um, you don't know if he took it from somebody? No. You don't know if the person who previously owned it had died and he took that vehicle? No. Okay. Objection or relevance, Your Honor. We're so far afield. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure what the relevance is. Okay. Now, there was some question about Mr. Blade, you know, uh, not actually giving you the documents uh, that were purported to be a driver's license. Is that right? Yes. Uh, but did Mr. Blade, you know, in fact, make the effort to <laughs> go over and grab the documents? But I don't have objection. What? That's the objection? That, that, is, that is antithetical to the testimony that was elicited. She never. I asked her if he handed her anything, if he was rummaging in a glove box or anything. She said she didn't even know. Okay, it, it's, so how it, is this it different? It seems like he just doesn't like redirect. Like it, Does it, that's uh, the objection. Uh, okay, ask the question again because I don't understand yeah. why. Are you asking her, did he ever hand them to her or come and take them from her? Did he make an attempt to grab the documents? Grab the documents, like where? From the glove box? Right. From, oh, yeah. Okay, you can answer. Uh, did Mr. Blandino ever make an attempt to grab the documents he was purporting to have as an international driver's license? When I asked him if he had a driver's license and he stated he had an international driver's license, he began rummaging on the passenger side. Okay. Which is, you indicated near the area where the glove box was. Yes. And you further indicated uh, that 
there was there some reason why he didn't ultimately produce those for you? Yes, um, I disregarded his attempt to give me the international driver's license. Okay. Um, and what does so, that mean? You disregarded. What does that mean? As he was rummaging to try to hand me something, I I didn't look at it. I didn't take it from him. Okay, you just said it's okay. Correct. Okay. Uh, just kind of sell off. Mr. Martinez, you said that you didn't see what he was rummaging for, correct? Yes. So he never handed you anything, correct? Correct. So your statement that he was trying to grab an international driver's license, in reality, you don't have any idea what he was looking for. Correct. Just okay, because... thank you very much. I'll pass it uh, to So, defense counsel cut you off after asking, you don't have any idea what he's reaching for. Uh, is that true, that you don't have any idea what he was reaching for? I assume he was reaching for the Objection, Your Honor, speculation. Because she can testify about what her perception was. But I understand she never got it or looked at it. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. My perception was that he was grabbing the international driver's license after he told me he had no such thing. Is that because he was reaching over in direct relation to him telling you he had an international driver's license? Yes. Understood. Absolutely. Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Can this officer be excused from her subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony here today. You may step down and you are excused from your subpoena. You may call your next witness. The next witness will be Detective Shy. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You may be seated. Please state and spell your personal last name for the record. David Chai, B-A-V-I-D-S-H-I-V-D. -E. Thank you, Your Honor. What do you do for a living, sir? Uh, I work for Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And uh, uh, how long have you worked for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department? For nine and a half years. Are you a detective? Yes, sir. And uh, how long have you been a detective? For four years. Okay. Uh, were you working in that capacity as a detective for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department on September 16, 2022? Yes, sir. And were you called out uh, to a traffic stop involving uh, an individual uh, around that occurred sometime uh, shortly before 8 p.m.? Yes, sir. Uh, do you see the individual that was the subject of that traffic stop here in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. It, I see that you're pointing over there. Can you just state for the record what the individual is doing or wearing? Uh, he's wearing CCDC coveralls. All right. Thanks. If the record reflect the identification of the defendant, Mr. Blandino. And was that traffic stop of Mr. Blandino and his uh, Dodge Ram vehicle over at Bruce and Bonanza here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada? Yes, sir. Upon arriving there, um, was there a determination made that the vehicle was going to be towed? No. What's that? Prior to arriving? No, upon arriving there. Oh, upon, upon arriving, yes, sir. Okay. And um, was that vehicle in fact towed? Yes, sir. Uh, was an inventory search conducted in relation to that vehicle being towed? Yes, sir. And uh, did you take part in that? Yes, myself and... Uh, um, I apologize, I don't know his name, the other male patrol officer. Okay. Uh, did you locate any documents purporting to be uh, something of a passport or a driver's license? Yes, sir, two. And where did you locate those? In the glove box. Okay. And where was the glove box? On the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. And that's the same Dodge Ram vehicle we've been discussing? Yes, sir. All right. All right, Roger. You may. Thank you. Yeah. And he's marked, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
want them individual photo or no, just back to face. Oh, okay. Thank you. Recognize what this? Yes, sir. And this is multiple pages. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you recognize it to be? Uh, one of the documents that was found. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you your grand jury exhibit. I'm sorry. States exhibit two. Could you please have a look at that? Uh, each page. What do you keep calling it grand jury exhibit? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's bad habit. I, okay. I apologize. <laughs> States exhibit one, States exhibit two. <laughs> But I think I can hear you. Can, can you, you hear something? me? Yes. Does it sound like a robot? No, you, you sound right awesome. Yes. Okay, this is a nightmare, and it's because probably because the Wi-Fi and I also have an old computer. But someone asked a very good question. Do you know if Gersten and Dickerson have, have some his, prior no. deal? What? So no. it's, it's not like a bad blood. It's just the heat of the moment thing. No. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't outrageous, but, but they got chippy on an objection. It was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw part of this. I didn't catch it all the way to the end. I, uh, you know, came on late. I, right, I had a trunk or treat last night with my kids. And uh, <laughs> trunk, got trunk so much candy. Oh, yeah. Can you hear? You can hear <laughs> Wilford Brindley saying, Da Buddhist. <laughs> Lots of candy. At least but he no. was like, you usually don't end up with a hangover after the trunk of treat. That's true. But <laughs> just nice. Now just he, he's from New York. That's that's what he'll tell you. All right. He's uh you know, I, I knew Joe. I mean I just I saw him around in the courthouse, but I uh I remember when I you know, when he took over I was just he's like, I'm, Oh, I'm from New York, I'm not gonna put up with this, you know. I'm like, What? You know, well, good luck. Bro. I mean, no, he's and he's doing it his way, he really is, but you know, Kim asked for, for the cuffs to be taken off, and he doesn't want to ask, but he'd ask the judge because Kim beats him into it. Then he makes a couple oh, objections know, yeah. that clearly were Kim's idea, but he's like, I don't know. He's just, he's in between. He's kind of rough on him, but then he's trying to placate him at the same time, which is which makes sense. Right. And, you know, he did a great job on Cross, I thought. Yeah, and I, I think so, too. I think, you know, and spoiler alert, Kim's going to ruin it. Stop me <laughs> right. if you've heard this before, but I think if he just sort of let his attorney sort of handle the whole thing here and not go Could have gone a lot better. Uh, yeah, stop me if you've heard that one before, but uh, I think that's <laughs> uh, the case. All right. Uh, anyway, that's the second. Yay, we, we have been. Okay, these are both real. Both yes, sir. And um, <laughs> are these fair and accurate depictions of those booklets and the documents contained within them? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's going to move for the admission of one and two, Your Honor. No objection. No objection, Your Honor. In addition to that, uh, within the booklet described as States Exhibit 2 or depicted in there, um, was there another item? Hi, Christina. Um, this item I did not see. Okay. I think that's the folded up. Uh, uh, objection, Your Honor. It uh, doesn't matter what he thinks it is. He said he never saw it. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I, I couldn't hear because it was he was talking so softly. Sorry, so maybe you could ask the question again. Uh, you indicated you did not see it. No, sir. Okay, so you're not aware of this document. No. All right. Thank you. By the way, Mike, did you shout out our Nevada judges? Am I able to switch to this? Is that possible? Frozen? Uh, You're muted. They can still hear us, hopefully. 
Okay. No, the thing is, this you this thing's just part of one. So I think there might be part two coming from one of charges. Yeah. I don't know what it would be. Give it a second. I don't know. The sequels usually aren't as good as the first ones, though. So we'll see. <laughs> is that screen on in front of you? The this one. This one here. I'm going to no. This one is not. Thank you. Well, that was a super chat. Let's see here. All right. First going to States Exhibit 1. Is this the front of that booklet? Yes, sir. Okay. Going to the next page of this exhibit. What are we seeing here? That's the next page of the booklet. And what does it say? Uh, it says, Elam's King of Israel. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. Here we go. And then underneath that. Hi, Sarah. Uh, and then Elam Rex, the Israel diplomatic. Uh, You're going to have to speak up. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm tired. Have a I, I know this oh, is. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. Yeah, but we we have we're not. I don't think this is a farm. It is. It is. Okay. <clears throat> this is sorry like. Sorry about uh, that. So it says. This is like my son got his, his driver's license at Autotopia at Disneyland. Okay, Jack, your honor. It's pronounced Elohim. I'm sorry. Okay. Just for the reference. Thank you. Thank you. And then under that, does that appear to be the same thing in French? Yes, sir. Now, uh, what is it under that? Uh, it says Elohim King the Israel. Uh, I, it's probably in another language, the same. And again, you're right, just for the, the middle is German, the bottom is French. You missed lots of fun okay. technical you know, difficulties. Well, I, I just know what this is. Okay. And uh, at the bottom, does it say passport be ambassador? Yes. All right, going to the next page. What are we seeing here? Uh, it says Israelite nationality. Uh, and then it goes on, tribe of Judah, talks about race, Hebrew, and then the year of birth, 1965. And then it says date of authorization, 85 of 93. Okay. It says uh, place of birth, Great Falls, Montana as well? Yes, sir. Okay. And to the next page. And it's identifying, you know, male, brown hair, hazel eyes, 5'8", uh, and goes okay. up across the wave height, just like a, a, a legal document. Okay. Uh, does that say 180 pounds per weight? Yes, sir. All right, going to the next page of this exhibit. Right here at the top, does it indicate name? Yes, sir. It's the word Kim Landino. Okay. And then what does it say under that? Ambassador. Okay. And then is there a signature portion? Yes. Ah, uh, thanks, Maria. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then what's under that? Uh, a photograph of Mr. Blandino. Is there anything else associated with that photograph? Uh, a stamp with the star of David. Okay. As well as the cross in the middle. Yes, sir. And then on the right hand side, uh, what do we see? It's got some numbers for authorization. And then this this part was interesting to me when I was out there because it for vaccination it has Bible verses. And then for driver's license information it has Bible verses also. Okay. Uh, so it indicates that there, that there is a driver's license portion of this document. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and then under that it says, in case of emergency in the United States, contact this number. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with that number? No, I am not. Go to the next page. And the next page. And the last page. Yikes, right, Nigel, are you okay? States Exhibit 2. Yeah, seriously, Nigel, right? Yes, sir. Going into 
to the uh, next page of this exhibit. Maybe go to the doctor instead of watching this. We see a similar <laughs> front page with the Elohim's King of Israel diplomatic passport. Yes. As well as in the other languages down below. Yes, sir. Same styling. Yes, sir. <clears throat> to the next page of this exhibit. Uh, I believe that's what here. we're dealing with. The same as the first. Sing okay. the song, Mike. The Mike. nationality, the tribe, the race, the year, birth, weight. Okay. All of this is the same. Appearance is the same. Yes, sir. And <laughs> to the next page. <laughs> what do we see here? The, on the same as the recent. Okay. And what does that say? Kim Blaine. Mm -hmm. Her name? Yes, sir. There's a back to her with a signature and then a picture. Um, just like the, the last one with the stamp of David in the cross. Okay. This one is a little brighter, um, especially at night on the stop. This one I can see a lot clearer. And then on the right hand side, this one also includes a driver's license uh, section? Yes, sir. With the same by Okay. So this is the next page, and the next page, and the next page. Uh, well, out on this stop was Mr. Blandino making any statements about these documents? <clears throat> not to me directly, but to my partner. Objection. <laughs> okay, well, he's not going to talk about them if he didn't hear them, <clears throat> but he didn't make any statements to you, but to your partner. Yes, ma'am. Did you hear those statements? Yes, sir. Okay. And what were those statements that Mr. Blandino was making? Uh, he was talking about the documents. What you, I was looking at them. And what did he say? Yeah, good thing so you're he was okay, Nigel. About that they uh, were international driver's license. Okay, so he referred to these two states exhibit one and two as his international driver's license. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and did he indicate uh, whether he's ever used these international driver's licenses? Yes, he told us about an incident in Boulder City. And what did he say? He said that they accepted them. Oh, they, he said that he used these in Boulder City and somebody in Boulder City accepted them as his driver's license? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, thank you. Did you have the opportunity okay. to confirm whether, I'm uh, I guess, number one, these are, in fact, driver's licenses? Yes, I did some research. Um, in our fusion center, we had the State Department that is with us, mm -hmm. and I showed them to the, the State fusion Department. center? They said that they were not passports or international drivers. These said it's the uh, okay. different law enforcement agencies. Do you record check, Mr. Ah. Like, you know, see if he has any driver's license? Yes, sir. And what were you able to determine? I found that he did have one in Arizona, but it was surrendered back in 93. Okay, so 1993 was the last time that he had an active driver's license? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah. These two documents that in States Exhibit 1 and 2 that he purported to be his international driver's license were, in fact, not a uh, driver's <laughs> license at all? No, not at all, sir. Okay. Stay with us and We can chant it again. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you all, by the way. Good afternoon. For, for hanging with us. Um, so you didn't perform the actual stop, correct? No, sir. <clears throat> okay. So all the nonsense about rummaging, whether it was here or there, wherever, you were not present for that. No, right. Okay. When, when you inventoried the vehicle, you found these documents. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, and you said, actually, I just heard you, you went through the fusion, uh, the fusion uh, center. In, in you were four in 1993? Oh. Okay. okay. You were in the fusion center? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm feeling old. But we're not here on terrorism, right? No, sir. All right, so why were you called to the scene? Do you know? My partner was contacted there. I was working with him at a, uh, a large event. Okay. Um, just going through the documents, Elohim, do you know what that means? I do not know. It means God. Oh, yeah, Jen. Well, yeah, you know reference there. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. If I were to tell you that it meant God, would you have any reason to disagree with me? No objection. Tell some speculation. It, oh, that's not speculation, it's the truth. A reason to disagree okay, with I said you can answer. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> oh man, this is getting spicy. You found out yeah, this is not a passport, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and it is not a driver's license, no. correct? Okay, and and it, it's listed as Israelite. 
not Israeli, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is not a passport of the state of Israel, correct? No, it's not a passport at all. Okay, and it's not a document from the state of Israel, anything like that, right? No. And in fact, it has a it has a Jewish star, a star of David with a cross in the middle, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so and and, and did you look at the last again? Is it your claim that he purported it was? He he was talking to uh, Detective B. And he did say that it was an international driver's license and that it worked. That he Boulder City just accepted it the month prior. Boulder City. Yes, sir. Okay. Boulder City Police. Okay. Okay. And did you look at the back cover of the the uh, document, the the black black back cover? Yes, sir. And, and that's a symbol there. Do you know what that symbol is? I do not. You don't recognize the Mercedes Benz symbol? It was hard to see, especially at night. Sir. Oh, okay. Uh, Can you look at it now? Do you have it in front of you? I do not. Can I approach it on And these are just the copies you gave me. There's a Mercedes Benz symbol on his passport? Actually, I thought it was his <laughs> I, I, Take a look I at that. You would agree that's the Mercedes Benz symbol, right? Yes, yes sir. Do you appreciate the irony of a Mercedes Benz symbol on an Israeli passport? Yeah, it's irrelevant. Uh, withdrawn, Your Honor. <laughs> but, Detective Shai, at no time did Mr. Blandino present this document to you and claim any kind of um, um, benefit or try to pass this off to you as a driver's license or anything of that nature, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, he did not present that to me at any time. Okay. Any time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, can you meet John? Yes. Uh, <laughs> sir, if you it were that easy, easy Kathy, yeah. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. To to me? <laughs> yes, sir. I was going over the documents on the hood of the car and using the spotlight so I could see them. And Detective Me was talking to him in the back of the patrol car. Okay. So I was. Up at the left side of the patrol car using spotlight and detective me was behind me with the door open and speaking to him. Okay. And it was Mr. Blandino that was referring to these documents as his international driver's license. Yes, sir, because Detective Me was questioning him on these documents. And would wow. that be Tarsh. trying to pass them off to somebody on scene as an international driver's license? What what do they have against fake documents in Canada? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Was he trying to indicate to Detective Me that these were his international drivers? Like, Objection. Asked and answered. It's not asked and answered. Answer. To, to be honest, sir, on this stop, I, I don't think. I think he was. To be saying honest, I'm, wait, I'm waiting. Ah, uh, David take Wellman with I the don't joke. Think he was saying <laughs> Rim for shot. That stop. I think he was more talking about the Polish <laughs> stop. Okay. Why do you think that? There we go. Because they were in the compartment. Oh, Lord. What does that have to do with it? <laughs> it? It didn't get brought up until he was in custody into the back of our car. Oh, so you weren't aware that he told the patrol officer who pulled him over that he had an international driver's license as he was reaching over to the passenger side of the vehicle? No, sir. Okay, so being aware if that happened, would that change uh, what your opinion was of that particular interaction? Uh, objection. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, the objection sustained. Okay. Best way. You just, I just want to make it crystal clear. At no time did Mr. Blandino try to pass these documents off to you as anything more than a document. Oh, here Correct. we come. Okay. Thank you very much. Was he talking to you? No, sir. Okay. You talking to me? All right. Um, can he be excused from the subpoena? He can. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. You may step down. You are excused from your subpoena. You may call your next witness. Uh, the state will rest. Okay. Well, at this point, Your Honor, I would ask for essentially a directed determination. Nothing has been proved. You don't want to call any witnesses? Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure. Uh, no, what I'm asking is I do not believe they proved their case. Yes. Okay. So I ask you to direct. If you're going to either yeah, you can't really deny that, that or that help hold it in the hearing. That means that there's no such thing as a direct verdict in a revocation hearing. 
Uh, I mean, uh, I will. I'll hear the witnesses from both sides, and then I'll allow the he, he doesn't um, want for witnesses, and I don't blame him. Your Honor, um, <clears throat> um, just so I'm clear, we are just simply dealing with the revocation. Correct. We're not dealing with that motion to impose sentence that was filed. Is that correct? I think that we're dealing with both of them today, Your Honor. Okay, but there has been no evidence regarding. And my question is, I have the the PO dealing with that here in subpoena. I just release them if we're not. I think that uh, my motion has the all, all the evidence that's needed for that, Your Honor. Okay, so you don't want to call the probation officer? I, I, you know, I don't see any reason to call the probation officer, given the fact that Mr. Blandino did not sign the probation agreement. That's what that's based on in and of itself. Okay. That makes logical sense. Any witnesses? Sit down. Sit down. And I would just note that that probation agreement is not <laughs> it's, it's, I don't think there's well, And he did. Out. Yeah. Sit down, kid. I was Ruby. I, I, yeah, I can't even get Ruby to do that. That's true. The probation agreements get filed. And again, Your Honor, I'm looking at looking at the Register of Actions has the revocation hearing on for today. It doesn't have the motion to impose sentence, if I'm correct. I'm looking at your clerk. Uh, I'm not sure there's a big difference. <laughs> you know, because if you revoke somebody, you impose the sentence. Uh, uh, well, potentially, Your Honor, I mean, uh, under the statute. But right. again, I, right. I'm just trying to figure out if I need to call Mr. Chandler, or, sorry, Officer Chandler to the stand to refute uh, this stuff that's not actually on the calendar. That, that's all I'm trying to find out right now. Well, apparently, the, the issue that he wouldn't sign the probation agreement, mm -hmm. yeah, that's before the court. Okay. Then I would call... Um, so I can just confirm my client at one. This is. Uh, you have been there, Ben. You have been there. I feel his pain, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sit down. This is why you got to tune into Law Talk with Mike. You heard it on the call Blaine, last week. Against my advice, he knows more than me like and Joe about. combined. I have um, belief that uh, he will have to testify in the narrative, narrative because I do not believe that I could um, ethically question him in that fashion. So I just like to present that to the court, and I will now call Mr. Bland, you know, to the stand. Okay, you can just sit right there. Okay. You can sit right there. You can raise your right hand. You can be sworn. I, as you know from the previous you thing, you right raise my hand. That is just so weird. So as an attorney, you get to choose what witnesses you call with the one right. exception, I guess, of a, a guy who says, I want to testify and he's got a right to do so. Correct. So then Joe's in a position of saying, but I'm not going to question him because I know what questions he wants. And I think they're counter to his case. It's unethical. I can't, I just can't do it. So, so can right. he just you can't... get up there and, and spew whatever he wants, judge? I Yeah, pretty much. Testify, yeah, you know, in, in narrative. Right, because he's going to say something right that is either right, not you can't suborn perjury, or he's going to say something that violates the rules of professional conduct or something. Yeah, and and yeah. If, the, if you did this in a vacuum, a judge would say, "What the hell are you talking about? You you want you're calling your witness and you're not going to ask them questions." But Judge Levitt's been through it with with Kim Blandino. She's like, "Oh yeah, no problem." <laughs> Right. Well, that makes she, all the she, sense in the world. <laughs> if you remember, in my uh, when I tried to withdraw the the uh, my motion to withdraw the hearing in in January, basically when Kim like finally real, I got it in his like accepted the fact that I wasn't going to follow his trial strategy. Right. He started sending letters to uh, Judge Bell, like the Chief Judge, the Judge Jones, I think it was, a bunch of people, and like divulging all this stuff that he you know he needed to represent himself because he was gonna testify as to like um judge levitt like her um mm -hmm. discipline with the nevada commission i was like kim that's not relevant it's not proper you can't do that blah 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 he's like oh this is totally relevant this case is all about you know sort of his activism with these judges mm -hmm. right and so when he disclosed that that's fine i said well i gotta withdraw because 
I can't, you know, that violates the rules of professional conduct to embarrass right. someone or whatever the rule was. I can't remember. And yeah, oh my gosh, she got so excited because when the judge was like, in her counter to me, I was like, judge, I can't put him on because I know he's going to abuse his right to testify. And mm. she's like, well, you can just have him testify in the narrative. Oh gosh, he was just over the moon with that because he was just like, I think in his mind, he thought he could testify basically then to anything mm-hmm. like rules of evidence and, and of relevance be, <laughs> be done. Yeah, yeah. He took it as a waiver of, of all, all rules that apply to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he found out quickly that uh, his testimony had to be relevant. But, oh, my goodness. This right, is about well, to get this is about to get good, man. Let's, Buckle let's up. see this debacle. Well, you can affirm. State under penalty of perjury. Well, you can affirm. Raise your right hand. I cannot swear or affirm or hey, raise my hand. You can raise your hand. No, I can't. <laughs> yes, you can. Even Daryl Brooks could put his hands in the air. Yeah. I did not raise my hand at the trial. Raise them like you just did. Understand that you will be given testimony under the pains and penalties of perjury. I have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that I okay. can be prosecuted for perjury if I do anything otherwise. Okay. Come on, Please everybody, put your counsel. hands in the air. Do you want me standing to testify or can I sit? You can stand or sit, whatever you want to do. Okay. State your name and spell your first and last name. My name is Kim Blandino, B-K-I-M, and then B-L-A-N-D-I-N-O. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Is there something you want to tell the court about um, this hearing today? Well, uh, absolutely. Uh, first, I'm just going to rebut what Martinez said, or Officer Martinez. I was in the I was in the uh, left lane. I don't know what to call you that number, but uh, the left lane going straight. The left turn lane was over there. The lady was there, and I observed her that her passenger light was out. I had seen it in my rearview mirror when I was traveling from. Uh, Bonanza and Eastern to Bonanza and uh, Bruce. We were stopped at a red light. I got out and I did this gesture, Judge. I did roll down her window gesture, okay? Because she had a window up. I just wanted to tell her that her passenger side light that was time. out and that it's dangerous, <laughs> that people could think it's a motorcycle going down the road. Well, and so is getting out of your car in the middle of an intersection, but go ahead. It was a red light, Judge. <laughs> It turned green, Tell him, Judge. and it wasn't that I got into my truck because so it's driving without officers. a valid so I license. Turn green, so that is dangerous. Got right back in my truck, hurriedly <laughs> come there, and then I see, then I see the, the truck <laughs> come through the intersection. I see it make a U-turn. I mean, the police vehicle. It makes a U-turn and turns on its lights. Uh, I was turning <laughs> on the 16th anyway because where Evie and I are presently staying on 44116, just a block down from there. I pulled over as soon as possible because I didn't want a failure to yield ticket. And so I was halfway in the red zone. But it was dark at night and the red zone was obscured. There wasn't a head uh, street light, so I couldn't see the red zone. But I knew if I didn't pull over at the curb at the immediate point, I was probably going to get a ticket for failure to yield. So I did what I was supposed to well, do. Well, that worked out because he didn't get a, he didn't get cited for failure to yield. So good. I, uh, uh, I, I I'm puzzled by oh, why okay. there's no body cam footage or dash cam footage. That dash cam footage would have shown that light was out. I'm commanded by my creator <laughs> to try and uh, protect people or to advise them if they're making an error or danger. If that lady, if I wouldn't have tried to stop her or let her know about the light. And she got in an accident and killed or hurt somebody seriously. God calls uh, me to account for that failure to uh, uh, warn. So there was a red light. There was no danger at the time. As soon as it turned green, I couldn't get it. I had to rush into my truck. I mean, he makes an argument that's like, like hey, it's it's a reasonable thing to do to tell somebody if they, they've got a headlight out, which I as far as that yeah, goes, but, I, I can get behind it. But it, do we have to get into God told me? Do you? Well, it's just it's his virtue signaling, you know. I mean, yeah. that he's he's the you know he's this great Christian person, you know, worried about humanity. I mean, yeah, you yeah. tell someone, but I don't know. I've never gotten that. I've told someone, hey, your 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 lights out or whatever. But I've never gotten out of my car and you know put my hands yeah, like usually usually hey, hey, your, your headlights out like. 
Come on. Usually you flash your brights at them. That, that's yeah. about it. Or you do Which I did. Uh, the red light and then the stop occurred. So Martinez, uh, it, it, her testimony makes it appear as though I got in my truck because I saw them, and that's just entirely not true. Michelle, it's terrible. The, uh, I explained to them the reason why the screwdriver and the thing was because the ignition was broken. I had gotten a new one, but I didn't have time to put it back in. So I was using the screwdriver, and contrary to what Martinez, Officer Martinez said, the screwdriver was in a box there. It was not hanging out of the ignition. I would put the screwdriver in, and then you got to wait and you just turn it. So uh, I presented them, to, and I don't know why they didn't testify. The screwdriver was properly I presented boxed them valid. Up. Registration from Montana. I have permanent license plates on that truck. It wasn't stolen. It wasn't procured by some kind of artifice or fraud, as the district attorney is seeming to allege. Permanent license plates? The hell is he talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know that. He was saying that, yeah, Montana, if your car is older than 11 years old or something, you can just get it permanently licensed plated or something. I don't know. But, you know, I, there's also I, the I, law. I highly doubt that's the case, honestly, but I, I just, okay. But, I mean, there's also the law here. You have to, residents, you have to get your, your license within 30 days of moving here. Yeah. And uh, he's only lived here since the mid-60s, I think he said he moved here. <laughs> so it might be time. <laughs> yeah, I think he's passed the 30 days. It was... Uh... A uh, permanent plate authorized by the state of Montana. I travel all over Montana, Arizona. That's why I have a Montana registration and I have an Arizona license. Montana especially because that's where I was born. And Montana, for three years worth of registration, any vehicle 11 years or older, they allow permanent registration. Some being Montana because that's when you obtain the vehicle, uh, it had Montana, Montana plates. You don't have proper title to it. You don't know how to go through it. So now he's he's backtracking and saying, "Oh, I've got I've got it registered through Montana for this reason." No, you 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 have it registered there because you don't have the legal capacity to change the registration. That's the truth of the matter. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't and have you're a license. Shim -sham a Nevada judge about it. Good luck. Well, if anyone can, he can, right? <laughs> Camera somewhere figured if they charge three years of the registration, they end up on the plus side on an 11 or a year old vehicle. However, it was legally uh, uh, done. When that stop occurred, officers Neeson and Martinez were both uh, curious about the ignition. That's true. I re did reach over, I showed them my Arizona ID. I have the Arizona ID because these banks. Gersten needs to like call the to state of Montana state government <laughs> as a witness. The state in the United States for cashing checks. When I get out of uh, CCDC, they'll give me a check. They will not give me cash. I will have to go to the bank and I will cash it with my ID. And uh, that's why I have the ID. Uh, I have, I've used this. Uh, no, wait a second. Let me get to the shy. And, uh, be... Okay, so the stop occurs, and then I'm cooperating fully with the officers. I tell uh, Officer Neeson that I'm going to uh, meet up with Evie. She's the 97-year-old World War II vet that you're well aware of from the trial. She was here in the gallery during that trial. She has serious health problems, and I'm her 24-7 caretaker. <clears throat> so I told him I was just heading down the street. As a matter of fact, I showed him uh, on, I showed Officer Neeson on my uh, smartphone there, me taking Evie to vote uh, in, uh, in uh, what was it, 2020. And so uh, it was a, a picture from the uh, Review Journal because we, we were there the first day of early voting. And he found that kind of interesting. I was wearing my Trump Jesus t-shirt, which you saw me wear, and the district attorney saw me wear one day during the trial, where it says, Trump now, Jesus forever, socialism equals slavery, savior equals self-rule. Savior being Jesus, that it, when you have the belief in Jesus, as I do, you have rule over yourself and your passions, 
And so it's also a uh, double uh, uh, entendre. Yeah, Aaron, I just have a second one. Sure. Okay. Can you kindly shut the hell up? <laughs> I'm translating. <laughs> so the officers yeah, indicated that they didn't the like the, the, the documentation that Arizona IMP. They saw the scope, they referenced the scope, that the scope looked, uh, it showed some previous driver's license issues. They said that they were going to take me down to the city jail and have me booked for municipal ordinance violations. The, uh, the, uh, the um, passport was not an issue at all, except that Martinez did ask, contrary to what she said, the truth is, she said, she looked at the ID, I said, you have a driver's license, I said, uh, I have an international driver's license. I reached in, I did get out of the glove box, I opened up where it says to the, the driver's license uh, page, and I showed her that. And my attorney now, for the record, is so looking up at So you did present the that document as Sorry. a driver's license? Huh? I'm not... You presented that document to the police as a driver's license? Not in point of fact. The... What I have to show, say about this is that the scriptural verses indicate uh, point of fact, shows you know. <laughs> that from the kingdom of Israel, of which I am a citizen and subject, with the king of Israel being Jesus, who's coming back any time in his second coming, that uh, the state, or the, I'm sorry, the kingdom of Israel does not. Uh, nice story, bro. So you don't have a driver's license. Is that what you're saying? This is a lot of these you know, particular biblical passages. I'm no body language expert, but not to make Joe covenant, Kirsten covenant. sitting there is just well, like. Well, the state of Nevada also acknowledges exemptions. Uh, so if, if you're yeah. going to counter that, Judge, I did in fact get a, a ticket dismissed showing a picture of this as my driver's license. To Gary Booker, so was then the city attorney. It's a certified copy. That document that is, uh, I don't know whether it's marked as exhibit. Uh, this one that's uh, on that third page. That's a certified copy of a dismissal. I, I just uh, paid 50 bucks for the broken taillight. And Gary Booker said, fax me a copy of your driver's license. And I will dismiss the... Uh, so uh, you presented that document to the city attorney in Boulder City. Well, I faxed it to him. Just a minute, and contended it was your driver's license. I said that that I t I clearly told him that it was from my country, which is the Kingdom of Israel. That does not require a driver's license. Now, I don't think the judge or Detective Shive understand international law. Every country in the world under an international <laughs> compact issues licenses for international purposes, which means if you get an international license in the United States, it's good to every other country but the United States. We if need to transfer this France, case to the Hague. It's good anywhere but from <laughs> France. And then you can travel in other countries. Where did you get it from? Huh? Where did you get it from? Where did I get this passport and driver's license? Mm -hmm. I made it myself. Okay. <laughs> under, <laughs> under the authority <laughs> of my king, which is Jesus, that allows me to do this. <laughs> Wait, I got to fully absorb that. I I wasn't prepared for that particular exchange. I, I heard this was crazy, but but we, we we literally have the exchange. Judge to Kim, where did you get the driver's license and passport? Kim, I made it myself. <laughs> Under the authority of my king. Which that right there is all you need to know. We I could have just clipped that segment and said, okay, here's the hearing. <laughs> Next. So, you know, Kirsten did a great job on Cross that he hadn't he actually did. presented this or anything to them. And he's like, no, I got to, I, I, I used this before in Boulder City and <laughs> it worked. And I'm like, no, yes, yes. No, stop. Ig ignore all that stuff my, my attorney did that might actually help me. No, 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 no. No, I do present that. this. I do <laughs> use this. I made this myself for crying out loud. Oh. And I've got authority as, you know, in my country, this is valid. <laughs> this is uh, this is out there. I, I just, I, you know, you know, when I had him on, he called me from jail. For those of you who don't know, he called me while he was in jail. I did a stream just, I don't know, like last week. 
And, and I tried to sort of help him on this very issue. I'm like, oh, well, you know, let's, I'm not saying that you try to use that as a, as a, a license. The problem is that you use trying to pass this off as a license is a much more serious charge than, than the other things. The other two things are under the traffic code. Right. And you and I did a video on this where he was in justice court in front of that judge. I like that judge. And the, center. And the judge yeah. is like, ah, these are just traffic matters. This other stuff is BS. And then he shows up here and testifies. No, no, I did try to pass off this document that I created myself as my own license. Yeah. And I've done it before. Yeah. With Gary Booker, there, the city attorney in, in Boulder city, which is bad as its own charge. It's, the, the, another thing and, is we're, we're ostensibly at a probation revocation hearing. A lot of probation revocation, and I don't do this, but it seems to me that a lot of revocations, there's an exception. It's like, hey, if you get a traffic ticket, we're not talking about that. But if you pick up another charge, an actual charge, we'll, we'll, we'll revoke you for that. And passing the false documents is a distinct separate charge as opposed to just traffic. And, and it's, it's he's the one who's presenting the evidence that he okay. used this in Boulder City. This isn't the process. He's doing the prosecutor's job. I don't. I don't. Like, I. I don't know how is, he did it. But I mean, he's yeah. smarter than me and Joe combined. You know. Yeah. Well, the prosecutor so, tried, tried to really establish understand. that. Uh, uh, Joe Gerson took great pains to undercut it, and then and then he comes back and just does exactly what what Dickerson wanted. Yes, he's presenting proof, like. <laughs> I would expect Dickerson. Is it true here that you <laughs> right. use this here? I have this fax that you whatever, you know, that you it's an element this. of the offense. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> and then he admits, <laughs> I made it. Like, you know, I he doesn't have diplomatic immunity. Is that I guess that's maybe that's what he's going for. <laughs> from the Israelite, he's I, which he distinguishes uh, I, not Israel. So it's the Israelite community. So if you're if right, it's not right, Israel, right, right. which I get it, I get it. It means it in the sort of the biblical sense. And the, I, I, I can go that far. But then there's no nation state of Israelite. Right. So, so if you're using this as your premise for an international license, it doesn't work. Correct. You would need a sponsor nation, an actual one, not one made up. Not not a spiritual one, right? I mean, that I know what famous it for being this... lost. They're, right. right. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's that's oh, that's what their claim to fame is. He's a lost tribe. It's like, well, now we know why. Like, hey, yeah, this guy's gonna try yeah, to join us. Let's stay oh. In. <laughs> oh, this is this is too good. This is made good. it up. There was right. nothing in long. What do you mean I made it up? You what does that mean? You made it up and you created this you just yourself. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You made it up. I mean, you're, you're saying you're made it up. You're saying that yeah. it's an international driver's license? Well, it comes under that. Now, whether people want to accept it as such, the State Department has many governments no. in the world that they do not have diplomatic relations with and they cut it off. And they do not recognize neither their diplomats, their ambassadors, or have any kind of mutual thing with that. But my king, which is a better chance to be claimed he was requires North that Korea. I preach the good news of his rising, his living today, and the fact that we are supposed to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our spirit, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. These are the two greatest commandments as dictated in the scriptures. And what I'm again your honor if I could have a second. Sure. <laughs> please, please, for the love of God, please shut your head. <laughs> you know, I had it pretty good there that you hadn't presented this and you, it was just a novelty. It is. There is nothing false in this document, Judge. I was born in 1955. The document was created in 1993. Uh, I... I'm shrunk two inches. I'm not 5'8 any longer. Obviously, I've got less hair than I have in this picture. The Star of David. Uh, the Star of David represents David the King of old. And the cross comes out because Jesus is a direct descendant of David and he's the King of Kings. Anything else about this stop? 
I'm sorry? Anything else about the traffic stop? I am testifying as best I can. I'm supposed to tell the whole truth, and if you don't have the whole truth, I can tell by your demeanor and your deportment that you're willing to put me right into prison. So I have a right well, I'm glad you got that much, to Kim. testify. <laughs> wow, very I perceptive. Testify, and it's how God gives me the words to speak. <laughs> yeah, pick that up, did you? And so the, about the stop, uh, to get back to that, and then we'll get back to this later. It, the, 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 I just want to stress there's nothing false about this document. Those scriptural verses are accurate. Uh, everything okay, in this is accurate. Please move on. Please move on. Yeah. So anyway, we're going through the stop. They're indicating that they're going to take me to city jail charge with municipal ordinances because we were technically in the city. As you know, they can charge either city ordinances. Please, I understand that. No need or in to this case, that. they charge me with a county uh, violation of Nevada by statutes on the traffic. Uh, but he's got to explain how smart he is. So when me showed up at the stop, he was very condescending. He obviously... Are you talking about <laughs> Detective me? Yeah, Detective okay. me. Anyway, Detective me, he says, oh, Mr. Blaine, you know, now I'm wearing my Trump Jesus shirt, which you've seen. Uh, he, he says, oh, I didn't recognize you with the ascot. He's completely did the meaning, and uh, <laughs> you could tell immediately that he was uh, following the communist thing, which show me the man and I'll find you the crime. He was giddy. He was anxious to find some reason, no matter what it was, to try and get my probation revoked. And so... He said to, he, he, he started ordering these officers about, they didn't testify to anything on that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Martinez didn't testify to anything as to the fact that Meade started ordering these officers around. When I was first brought to the car, I'm facing this way on the car, they got me in the I car, there are and some. they said, put your hands behind sure. the back. And I said, uh, are you going to cuff me and arrest me? He said, no, we're just for protection, for safety. So when Neat said, oh, he didn't have a driver's license, which that's what Mark uh, Neeson told uh, thing. He said, okay, then arrest him. So that at that moment, they cuffed me. And uh, uh, Neat uh, was immediately elated to the fact that seeing me cuffed, I could see this in his eyes. Uh, he's a, a very angry, spiteful person. And so... Uh, elated, angry, and spiteful. Then he's uh, issuing other orders, and he said, wait a minute, did they, he show you something? And then I spoke as to the international driver's license and to the Boulder City dismissal by City Attorney Gary Booker. And so I had told him uh, that I presented it uh, dozens of times over the decades. His, uh, he has contact with his kids. I don't know how much they try and intervene and stop him. I think they just, they, like, yeah, that's, that's just dad being dad. You're muted, Mike. From, from talking to Kim, I get the sense that the kids do have a decent relationship with them, but they but they think, it's kind of like you. It's like, I, I can get along with you, but I can't control you, and I'm not going to try. Yeah, and I think, I mean, they were out of his life for, you know, for quite a while, obviously, you know, when he was in prison and that sort of thing. And, and um, you know, I get the sense that, I've only met the one, one of his sons, Zach, who's a really, you know, he is a really nice guy. And a really good, good person, you know. And uh, I just get the sense that he just sort of, you know, there's just the lost opportunity, you know. I think he just sort of to have a, you know, it's yeah. his dad, and he loves his dad, and yeah, kind of knows he's this way, you know, and 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 has to be whatever. But I, just sort of a lost disappointment, I guess, is kind of the sense I got from talking to him about his relationship and just sort of background on his dad is just like you know yeah, yeah. That makes things sense. could have been different mm -hmm. we're sort of wishing they had been but people in montana arizona when i travel uh and no one has had any issue as a matter of fact in the 1994 conviction okay. please do not we're not going back to 1994. no no i'm saying i have <laughs> this in my possession from 1993 on, on or i'll assume you're done no the state of nevada had to move on or i'll no. assume you're done <laughs> so mead says okay uh he asked for permission to search my truck okay Mead did i'm cuffed up now and uh uh it's tight and so 
Officer Neeson is very professional, and I said, it's tight, and he said, okay, let me try and loosen it, and he did loosen it. And Meade said, oh yeah, Mr. Blandino likes to play games. You could obviously tell the vindictive nature of what he was uh, uh, saying in that regard. So when I get put into the uh, patrol car, well, who's the one who said? Uh, I'm presuming I'm going to fun. city jail. And he said, no, Mr. Right. Blandino, now you're going to go to uh, Clark County Jail, and you're going to be booked in as a felony. The, 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 what, what my indication was that he was charging me with two counts, even though these are just duplicate documents of the same. One's a backup. There's one that was obviously weather damage. That's why one is more clear than the other. So uh, when I'm in the patrol car and uh, driving, I tell officers Neeson and Martinez, well, no good deed goes unpunished. Me trying to warn the lady of her life. Not, but for that, I would not have been stopped. I knew the risk when I got out. I know God wanted me to be arrested for whatever purposes he has in mind. Those will unfold in time. But I know that I've done some good Sometimes. at the County Detention Center for the time. I can't I've play poker. At. Yeah, I don't and have a, a witness poker face. And to be uh, vindictively prosecuted like I am, I know serves God's purpose. One thing that they didn't indicate on this, there's fine print. It says unauthorized use of this passport is punishable by law. You didn't read the fine print in there. Oh. Yeah. So that's on uh, on that. <laughs> what law? The very bottom. What country? So everything was done legally <clears throat> under Title Eight. I rescinded my U.S. citizenship. I am not a U.S. citizenship citizen. I indicated that uh, to uh, uh, P.L. Chandler. This was available to Officer Chandler at any time. He saw the he saw the uh, when he came to visit the house for his uh, review under probation. He saw that I. Uh... Well, right there when I first met Kim, I, I have a whole playlist on this. But the first time he came out, he took exception because I called him a sovereign citizen, and he just did the most sovereign citizen thing possible. And said he renounces his citizenship, and he's a, and he's a, you know he's sovereign. No, no, he's no, no! Didn't law. you? I saw this clip. No, he rescinded his citizenship, not <laughs> renounced it. He'll, he'll, rescinded uh, it. Yeah, you'll see that on cross. <laughs> I hear, I hear. He also talks. He also tries to play the traveling card here coming up. Yeah, and it's just like. Yeah, I remember him bristling at being called a, a yeah, a sovereign citizen. Sovereign citizen. And, well, then don't act like one. And he really didn't most of, through most of the trial and everything. He did all other crazy stuff, but not that. But here he's he seems like he's just gone to that as a last resort. And maybe it's been there the whole time, just sort of bubbling yeah. under the surface. I do remember him saying something that he wasn't a citizen or something about that. Um, but uh, you know, I. I I guess, yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, enough about his Israelite citizenship to even tell you. So maybe he's not sovereign. He's a, he's a member right here. of a, I mean, you know. It, it oh, really goodness. reminds me of the more so sovereign citizen thing where like this Israelite, it's sort of a biblical reference in there. And I get what it is. And the, the sort of mm -hmm. the same thing as the Moors. The Moors don't have a nation state. It, it's a group of people for, historically defined you know it's not a nation it just isn't right. and then you say well i'm a citizen of this fictional place and and that's really convenient because then you don't have any laws you have to abide by yeah you're making a good point maybe i uh i might go yeah. uh full soft sit here on you soft sit had time. montana plates in the truck and so when i said yeah he said is that your truck and i said yes and he kind of like smirked a little bit I said, why did you want to, I think I believe I said, on my memory, yes, my recollection is, I said, did you want to look at the truck and search it? Because you, you have authority to search anything without a warrant. And at that time, I had those passports in that glove box as well. I, this was maybe a month earlier than the traffic stop. So, um, the, uh, the officers arrest me and they take me to CCDC. And then I have now the Justice Court uh, preliminary hearing and stuff set on the the uh, the uh, traffic, the uh, misdemeanors, and then the felony. But at no time was I had any evil design whatsoever. 
I don't, I don't require this for me. I uh, use this to show other people because they like to see picture ID. I, like I said, I've used this for decades. You don't, you don't ID yourself. I travel Karen. with no. it. You, you can see that it's a big size. It doesn't spit in the wallet. So if I'm wearing my suit, I wore it in my suit. Thanks, Benjamin. And so uh, <laughs> um, there was no intent to defraud anybody. Uh, this uh, this report says it is common for individuals with anti-government idea. I'm not anti-government. I am against tyranny. I'm for freedom and liberty. That's what my king demands. He demands that we live that way and that we extend that to others, regardless of their religious beliefs. But there is nothing unlawful in creating this. I rescinded my U.S. citizenship legally. Are you legally. repeating the same thing from Mr. Dickerson? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm not done yet, Judge. Yeah, you're, you're done. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you're not anti-government. No. Yeah, you're not anti United States citizenship. That's not anti-government. 8,000 people expatriate every year from the United States. And they're not anti-government. Yes, they usually have to U.S. citizenship, correct? No. I did not renounce. I rescinded. There's a difference. See? Uh, yeah. Um, and you're also a diplomat? Yes. Okay. And that's what States Exhibit 1 and States Exhibit 2, these passports of yours. Indicate He's very diplomatic, right? as you can My see. My mission is to He's preach the good news that full Jesus has risen, that He's alive today, and to uh, preach the good news of the gospel. Let me turn this one over here. Can I do that for you? Are you going to use the Elmo again? Yeah, I'll use that. So. Oh, man. Let me show you. Stop. Basically, we have one here. Mm -hmm. This is the one that you showed, uh, Officer Martinez? I don't know. I had two, and I don't know which one it was. Sorry, this is State's Exhibit 2. Okay. It was either State's Exhibit 1 or State's Exhibit 2 that, That's you, right, right. that you showed Officer Martinez as your international driver's license. Right. Okay. And, and I use international driver's license as a shorthand because people don't understand the concept oftentimes. Oftentimes in, in life. It's, it's it's my shorthand. Shorthand. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so State's Exhibit 2 is this one. And then inside the front cover of State's Exhibit 2 is that document you're talking about. Isn't that right? Yeah, the dismissal by the Homer City uh, Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you this. This is State's Proposed Exhibit 3. Showing you each page of it. Right. Back in front. Mm -hmm. that, that one you just passed? You want me to... Yeah, we can chat about it, but I want to show it to you first. Right. You recognize it? Yeah. Okay, is this that document that was in that passport? It's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. <laughs> State moves through the image of State's Exhibit 3. We jump to council. That, that one copy is yeah. the fact. There's no question pending. I'm sorry. Apologize. Your Honor, this is a multi-page document. I guess my objection would be that uh, the, the district attorney is trying to enter uh, information of a criminal complaint. I, I, I believe it's some kind of a conviction that would be inappropriate wow. and irrelevant uh, at this point. Who would hear that case? Less than 10 years can come in. Uh, I know this Boulder is a revocation hearing. Stuff. It's it Boulder City Municipal information. The one now. where he contends they were A-OK -okay with this being offered as a driver's license? And the one you've been testifying about. OK. You know, I just picked up in the middle of that is Dickerson went over and poured Kim a glass of water. He did? Yeah. Which, I mean, it was, it was I mean, he just did it and handed it to him. I'm like, that, that's really strange. I, I uh, offer that, Your Honor. I, I, I'm sure my client would disagree with me. I, I, I know what's going to happen, but I want the objection noted. Okay, it's noted and it's admitted in evidence. Thank you. This is on, Mr. Bledio? Yeah. Great. Uh, Showing States Exhibit 3. This is that document, the front page of it that we've been discussing. <coughs> Excuse me. Got my long pipe. 
Is I, that, I, can you orient it to where I don't have to turn my yeah, head sideways? You know, let's see. I'll do it this way. Okay. Okay. Is this that document? Oh, good yeah, this is the Municipal Court of Older City. Indicating it's Ooh. for an online That's a long prior. discussion. Right. Start the top uh, of the list. You think that is my idea? Go from there. Yeah, don't use the name, middle name Dennis, but they did. Okay. And then this document was actually certified by the court, is that right? Well, I obtained that because I wanted evidence that uh, it was dismissed based on, the case was dismissed based on my faxing over a copy of that. And so you obtained the certified copy, right? Right. And it says here on the second page, I hereby certify that this is a true and correct copy of the original in the Boulder City Municipal Court file. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's dated December 24, 2001. Yeah. And signed by the clerk. Court clerk for Boulder City Municipal Court. Right. And is that that's the back page of this front page we've been looking at? Uh, uh, I, I guess it's the back page. I didn't know if it was two sided or, or single sided. Okay. And then here on the next page, this is the third page of State Exhibit 3. Uh, is this a fax? Is that what that is? Yeah. yeah uh, Gary Booker, who was then the city attorney, said fax over a copy of. Uh, your driver's license and we would dismiss. Your Honor, I think I apologize. I'm going to object on relevance. I, we're not here litigating this thing. Even if he did this back in 1993 or whenever, the statute of limitations, I mean, we're, we're so far afield of what we're dealing with right now. What's in front of Your Honor is right. whether he's using this. Um, passport and passing it off as being the driver's license. Right, in the incident that we're here for, which was the traffic stop, not something that happened in Boulder City 20 years ago. Okay, so, I'm going to allow you to continue. Thank you, Your Honor. And so, Mr. Blake, you know, uh, you, was it? You that, that all made sense. I would try to derail it the way Gersten did, although it's a bad objection. She she understood well, it and ruled the right way. I, I get uh, why I mean, everybody was. I understand why Dickerson is doing what he's doing. I understand why the defense attorney is doing what he's doing. I understand why the judge did what she did. Do you understand why Blandino is doing what he's no, doing? No, no, I don't. I'm uh, there, I'm lost. <laughs> you said from Office Depot, is that right? Oh, uh, I didn't. I, you're, you're reminding me. Yeah, I guess that was from Office Depot. And that you said that on August 10th, 1998. <laughs> I'm sorry, he coughed and I couldn't hear you. August 10th, 1998. Is that right? That's what it indicates here in the top corner. Uh, they must have their date stamp. Why does that say 2001? Oh, I must have got the certified copy much later than that. Okay. Yeah, 1998, right? Okay. Right. Does that sound right? Well, it, it looks right. I mean, unless their date stamp was wrong. I, I don't recall that date, but. This would have been associated with the facts, correct? Right, yeah. Okay. All yeah, because right. he didn't even. Uh, he said, "Just he didn't even want me to have to come into the office or anything and show him the actual document or the passport. He wanted me to just fax it. I guess he's a busy guy." Okay, and so then here. Yeah, I don't know why he objects to using the Dennis. Copy of the passport. He even filed uh, a motion asking the court right, to sense. like strike right. his name Dennis right. from all the right. legal okay. procedures. Well, no, to the uh, city attorney. Okay, to the city attorney. All right, and. Uh, that's the same thing that we've been looking at in both uh, States Exhibit 1 and States Exhibit 2, correct? Here's States Exhibit 2 on the fourth page. Right. That's correct. Okay. Uh, just showing your honor what I showed him, States Exhibit 2 on the fourth page. Um, and that's where it indicates that you have the driver's license here, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's, you also mentioned that, uh, no, to, well, to make sure that- oh, Hang on, hang on, hang on, that's, that's not my question, okay. right? Uh, at the bottom of this page, that's what you were mentioning is the unauthorized use of this passport is punishable by law? Right. Okay. Uh, and showing the fourth page of states, exhibit two, that's what it says right here at the bottom, is that correct? Right. Okay, and then fourth page of States Exhibit 1, the same thing, unauthorized use of this passport is punishable by law. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. 
So in fact, it's State Exhibit 3, the page we are on. Turning to the next page, and then uh, there was a certification of that page as well, correct? Right. All right. And then ultimately, uh, what you have with that is this document. Is that right? Right. Uh, and this document... I, know, I can't read the left side. You got that old two part of the left. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, let me zoom out for you a bit. Okay. So this is a document that's titled Acceptance of Negotiations. Right. In your name, Kim Dennis Blandino or Blandino. Yeah, I didn't write that. I think that was Gary Booker, an associate. And it indicates count one and count two, count one being uh, taillight issue. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Uh -huh. And count two being unlicensed driver. Right. And then uh, it talks about your plea here, right? Accepting the plea, pleading no contest. Is that right? Right. And then and specifically as to count two, the unlicensed, unlicensed, excuse me, unlicensed driver, uh, it indicates what your negotiation is. Is that what that is? Uh, I'm trying to read that. If the defendant has copy of driver's license municipal court by 3 p.m. today, the city agrees to dismiss, otherwise at for trial on 10 98 Okay. It, it would read correct if it's defendant faxes copy of driver's license? Oh, fax. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. What did I say? Uh, gets or has copy? Have faxes, yeah. Okay. And then here, this word, uh, otherwise, comma, set for trial? Oh, set. Yeah, set for trial. Okay. okay. And, and then... The writing is as bad as the line is. And then this was signed by you. <coughs> is that a yes? Wait a minute. What, what is that? Defendant, Defendant attested by... Boom. Boom? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so, see, he didn't even want me to come in to sign. He just, I said, okay, yeah, that's good. Okay. And then that document as well was certified by the court. Right. Okay. And then this final document. So you carry States Exhibit 3 around within States Exhibit 2, that your passport, just to kind of show, you know, that this is your driver's license and it works, right? I, I show to evidence that uh uh, everybody had the opportunity to accept or reject that. G Gary Booker could have rejected it, but um, I'm not forcing anybody to accept my religious beliefs or my practices, you know, about Jesus and the kingdom of Israel. However, uh, I knew that uh, claims like yourself would say that it's phony, it's fraudulent, and I think this goes to the fact that it's a substantial document that was accepted by a prosecuting agency within Nevada. I had it accepted by the Nevada Department of Prisons before they became the Nevada Department of Corrections. They had that in their possession for four years. And LVMPD has had possession oh. of that. This is the first time. Good Lord, Kim. I, I had the D Nevada Department of Corrections <laughs> accept this document. I, you know, I mean, let's, let's bring up my, my, my last stint in, in the, uh, in the penitentiary here for no, for no good reason. <laughs> well, now, you know, in a revocation hearing, you can't use this stuff, you know, against him in, uh, you know, in court. Well, you can use it, I guess, or you can always use it to impeach a witness, you know, on a prior right. inconsistent statement. But so now. He's volunteering. Has to, yeah. So. Uh, He's not hiding it. So I don't know. How is Gersten going to defend him? He's got a whole other case that's going to come up through the system on this issue of the of the phony passport. Yeah. And I think he's got a good defense. Like, you know, like I said, it's like my son's, you know, the his driver's license he got at Disneyland, you know, right. after Autotopia. It's like right after, you know, they get out of the cars, it's right there to buy the driver's license and it's $8 <laughs> and you have to pay cash and there's no change. And it's like right there and Disneyland doesn't make enough money, but like, no one, no, obviously, you know, my nine year old walking around Someone's, with his Autotopia oh, driver's license. Someone's a little better about the Autotopia driver's license experience. <laughs> well, you know, man. I've been there, brother, I've been there. 
<laughs> I'm lucky to have left Disneyland with the gold still in my teeth, man. Holy you cow. Got, you got mugged by Disneyland. Plain and simple. <laughs> yes. I, I, with an auto right. driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think he's got a valid defense. Like, come on, you know, and I think he could, I think it could win with the, you know, this is a, a novelty. This is a, you know, right. something that's, you know, maybe dear and personal to him and his religious beliefs, you know, and it's something for him that he keeps with him to remind him of who he is and what he believes and what he stands for, that sort of thing. Sure. But he never presented it, you know. I think he had that, you know, he, he, you know, whatever the, was it Martinez, the, the, the patrol officer, he never presented it to you. He said he had an international driver's license or whatever it was, and I think he could win. But here he is admitting, yes, I used it. Yes, I am an ambassador from the planet, yes. you know, and from, fact, from, ah! And one of the times I'm going to tell you, and the, one of the ways I'm going to try to explain that it's, it, that is, that it, that I used it and it worked was I presented it during my former prison stint. Oh, good Lord. Could you say anything worse? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's what's next. He's going to, uh. He's going to admit, you know what? I was the second gunman on the grassy knoll. <laughs> Absolutely. Plaza. And, it's like, and ah. if you cut, if you cut that out, then you've got two traffic citations that she probably wouldn't even revoke him on. Uh, Have I faced any kind of charges or repercussions for having that document? Because you've used this as your driver's license for years. Well, it's not just my driver's license. It, it talks about vaccinations. You'll see that on there. It describes me. It's a, a, a multi-purpose document. It's, <coughs> I want to have other people uh, come to a knowledge of Jesus and to, in fact, become citizens of the kingdom of Israel if possible. Because if everybody did as I do, to love thy neighbor as thyself, and love God with all thy might, and thy strength, and thy heart, this world would be a paradise. So it being your driver's license is just one of the things that it is, right? No, it's a, a, a evidence of what... And, and you indicated that... You indicated when you were testifying in the narrative that you used it as such, as a driver's license, dozens of times. I think that was your quote, right? Right. I've had cases dismissed here in the Justice Court, okay. showing that, and in the Municipal Court of Las Vegas. All right. There's nothing fraudulent about it. Any other witnesses? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Can you stay on point? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, my, my client would like to add something. Um, okay, you can, but I'm not going to hear the same thing over and over again, but go ahead. Can you stay on point? I just have point? to say, I mean, this uh, is not, was not prepared, Sorry. not possessed, not in any way used for any evil design whatsoever. Okay. I'm a safe traveler on the road. I look out for others. I yeah, according to you, right? You're the only one that gets to test that, acknowledge that, because you don't go to the DMV and take a driving test or a written test, right? I'm, I'm prohibited from doing that. I'm prohibited from Salty. going and making a contract with the state of Nevada. I. I've tried to, right. and, and the thing is, and what, you can't drive on call, the roads. You're entitled let's to call the state of Nevada as a witness. Drive on the roads. You don't well, get to make up your own set of rules. No, it, it's it is international law, Judge. It's hey, international law. If you don't else? want to accept that, I cannot debate you on that. You're on the bench. I'm here. Anything else? But the other thing is, because of this and my rescission of United States citizenship, I am not nor have I ever been since this a resident of the state of Nevada. I'm a traveler. I'm, my mission is no different. You're a what? A traveler of what does that within mean? the what? United States. I travel. I, I, I do. The address that I use, 441, I use care of 441 because at any moment God might have me move. I do not. Uh, claim residence of Nevada. I'm well, not a resident. Lord, I now, was born a rambling man. This is very important. How did you vote? How did you vote? I don't vote. I cannot vote here. Be okay, illegal you just to vote. took your friend to vote? I thought you said in the beginning you Yeah, I take her to vote. vote. She okay. likes to vote. She's a U.S. citizen. 
And she's actually a true African American, born in South Africa, naturalized in 1961 in the United States. And so she likes to vote against corrupt politicians. And that's what I do for her. It's part of what I do for her. I take her to her medical appointments and so on. I took a vow to take care of her till the end of her days. If, unless okay, anything something else stops relevant me. to this procedure? Yes. <laughs> it's Something's going to stop you. I have a feeling. Yeah, this is a fraudulent, a fraudulent document. It's impossible to be fraudulent. This court, uh, you judge, have torn an oath uh, to protect, defend the okay. U.S. Constitution. It appears as though you quit testifying. No, no, listen, no, listen, Judge. Arguing. No, I don't. Ha I, no, you have an attorney. You recognize Your the attorney time. will argue. Yeah. So apparently okay, you don't but, have any other oh, no, testimony no, I've got or something witness else. at this time. I've got something uh, oh, that, that this document, goodness. I just want to make it absolutely clear, is not false in any way. Okay. Nor can the, the, the district All attorney right. say it was false. And under okay. under international law, I am do, do, acting absolutely appropriately. If the State Department, uh, to, to rebut what Mr. Uh, uh, Detective Shai said, he may have checked with the State Department, but just because the State Department does not recognize this kingdom and this king does not mean that it's invalid or fraudulent. The U.S. government refuses to recognize states and countries all over the world. And I don't force anybody to accept this or, you know, uh, accept its validity. There was no evil design in any way, shape, or form in, in doing this. It's no different than uh, me. That was one thing I wanted to rebut as well. Me said there's no such thing as an international license. Now, police are allowed to lie to the public. We can't lie to the police, or that's a crime, uh, uh, lying to the police. And he knows he's lying through his teeth when he said it. <laughs> the, the other thing that I did want to address on that stop is Meade and give him baker's boxes. Uh, dismayed that I was not put in prison on that conviction. And this, he indicated his vindictiveness that he wanted to put me back in and have me back under uh, lock and key. And that's what his intent is. And, and the DA is vindictively prosecuting me on this case in the Justice Court. There is nothing improper at all okay, with so this document. Okay, that's about the 18th time you've said that. So I'll assume that you are done. And I'll um, hear from the state and um, any argument you want to make to the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, well, oh, well, I'm sorry, we do have another witness. If, uh, oh, I apologize. Yeah, we have to, uh, Officer Chandler. So I, okay, I just wanted to, I have to leave in like six minutes. I, I, it should not take more okay. than Okay, all right. Later. Uh, Gerson's just happy that he's done. So now he's back in control. No matter what happens with the yeah. hearing. I solemnly swear at the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got it. You may be seated. Please state and spell your first and last name for the record. Eric Chandler, E R I C C H A N D L E R. Do you want to have it marked for some good Yes, Your Honor. Sure. Just and one? Just one, yes, Your Honor. It's, okay. It is the. Um, it is the, uh, the probation. probation document. Uh, I believe the state has no objection. Yeah, I believe it's the okay. same one that was filed with my motion. Okay, so it'll be um, Exhibit A, and state has no objection to its admission? No objection. Fine. Okay, it's admitted. Officer Chandler, you were, um, uh, what do you do for a living? I work for uh, Nevada State Police Division of Pro and Probation. How long have you been doing that? 15 years. At some point, you were Mr. Blandino's uh, probation officer? Yes. Okay. And as a result of that, you um, sat down and discussed with him, went over the rules and regulations? Correct. Right, right. and, and as part of that, um, you uh, put together a, a probation agreement and rules? Uh, the, the probation agreement is uh, made by our file setup, which is based off of the court minutes from Okay, I, I'm just going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 1, and, and, and do you recognize that as the document? Yes, sir. Oh, Monty. Okay. How are you? Um, I'm just going to put it up on the here. Defendant's um, Exhibit A. Oh, it's Exhibit A. I apologize. That's okay. 
So I hope, uh, let me see here. This is the document we were just talking about. Oh, God, I'm such a hard thinker. Uh, this is the document, correct? Yes, it is. And that's your signature at the bottom? Yes, it is. And there's a place for Mr. Blandino to uh, sign as well, correct? Correct. And, and he did not. He wrote, chose not to sign, correct? I actually wrote that. Oh, you wrote that. Okay. Yes. And, and put my initials next to it. And on the second page, where the special conditions are, um, again, the same thing. Your signature at the bottom and chose not to, uh, chose not to sign. That's well, correct. correct. That's correct. Okay. Did you have a problem with that? As far as him signing or not signing yeah. it? No, I did not. Okay. You didn't report it as something he, sh you know, he didn't do. You didn't recommend that he come back to court for revocation or anything of that matter, correct? I did not. Okay. And I just would like you to look at um, uh, special condition um, number eight. Okay. Okay. And it says have no contact with the courts. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And the second one, I'm sorry, the next one, number nine, it says do not enter the courts unless the defendant is present for official business, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you reconcile that? Uh, Mr. Blandino and I discussed that. I actually called uh, the court to get some clarification. Uh, I was advised um, by the judge's uh, ADA um, that he was to discuss these matters with his attorney if he needed clarification. And also, uh, I explained to him that um, he couldn't just show up at the courthouse or being engaged in any proceedings unless he actually had a case on calendar and not just showing up at a courthouse. Okay. As written, it was confusing enough that you called the court, correct? It wasn't confusing. It was, it was just plainly stated not to have contact with the courts. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's the first one, number eight, and then number nine says, don't, you can show up. I mean, correct. And, and this isn't trick questions. I'm just, I'm just saying it, it's, a, it's a little confusing back and forth. Objection, Your Honor. That's been answered. You indicated it's not confusing. I didn't think it was confusing. Well, you wrote it, Your Honor. I understand. But what I'm getting from I, 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 I mean, I'm obviously not going to prevent him from coming into the court if he has some type of official business or docket. Okay. You know, something on the docket that would not be appropriate. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and I mean, I'm sort of in a jackpot here, Your Honor, because what I want to say, obviously, is to, to someone, and we understand that's what, what you meant. I'm not sure the words on the page were clear to Mr. Blandino. Uh, would you make this argument, you know? Yeah, I mean, that that's fine. Okay. I uh, mean, if that's his only issue, I mean, you could even take out number eight and say, do not have any contact with the courts unless you're there for official business. Uh, and then he'll sign it, right? Uh, that's what I, I thought. I, I don't know if I can speak for Mr. <laughs> I'm just... The problem. Okay. Then, we'll, then we'll go to the next thing. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. Officer Chandler, what I'm getting at is when you sat down with Mr. Blandino to work on this document with him, is it fair to say that he was confused by some of the issues, some of the conditions? I don't know if he was confused. What I explained to him is my interpretation of number eight was that under the instant offense, he had direct contact with the court as far as emailing the court or showing up to court. He didn't have proceedings, so that's what I took number eight to me. Okay. And, and that, again, you just said that was your understanding. Correct. Okay. And would it be fair to say Mr. Blandino didn't sign because he communicated to you, I can't sign this because I don't understand? I'm not sure if that's what he said. We had, obviously, conversations with Mr. Blandino are very long, so I yes. don't recall everything that we discussed. <laughs> we went over this document in detail. I mean, who knows? Every single it word it might have been in there based on my prior, prior conversations, <laughs> and at the end, he chose not to sign it. Okay. Did you have any indication after you signed this that Mr. Blandino would not uh, follow the conditions set forth on this document? No, I did not. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Dickerson? Sir, did you tell Mr. Blandino he did not sign the document? No, I did not. In fact, Mr. Blandino just decided that he wasn't going to say. Brooke, 
Kim Blandino makes um, everything and unnecessarily complicated. Are you aware that by law that document is required to be submitted by the defendant to the court, by, to, by the defendant to you, and then uh, from the Division of Parole Probation to the court pursuant to any grant of probation? I wasn't aware that by law he was he had to sign it. I've never had this. I've never had somebody refuse to sign a probation agreement. Understood. Thank you very much. In how many years? Fifteen. Okay. Anything uh, else? Uh, well. Uh, but again, you, you had no indication that he did not intend to follow this document, correct? Well, I, it's hard for me to speculate whether he would follow the conditions or not, uh, whether understood. he signs it or not. I, I have no indication either way whether he would follow them or not. Okay. The, the fact that he didn't sign it didn't give you concern at that time. You, you signed it, passed it in, and that was the end of that. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, um, my client wants me to recall him for rebuttal. Uh, again, okay, I don't know if what he wants to do that because it's now after one o'clock. We'll have to continue the matter. And so, how about Monday? Uh, can I just check my calendar? Your Honor? Ah, this is why it's part one. Oh boy, Halloween! How Mo fitting! Mo Monday, we're doing it again. Can you guys do Monday morning at ten? Yes, sir. Oh, good morning. Oh. Mr. Dickerson? Yes, Your Honor. I should I should be able to make that work. Okay, but I can excuse the officer. He does not have to come back. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll release the Thank officer. you very Thank much you, for being here. I appreciate your willingness to be here and your testimony and your excuse and your subpoena. Thank you, Your Honor. And then we'll see you all Monday morning. Thank you. I'll judge for the After all that. Monday, After Monday. all that, we get continued to Monday. I did not watch this. Like I said, I had some ideas because people left, uh, uh, told me things in comments and messaged me. But I didn't. Yeah, I, I saw about I saw about an hour's worth of it or so before I went to bed last night. Oh, man. I, I don't need to He even continued. Know. I, Got a cliffhanger here. <sighs> Maybe we'll take a look at it. Although I don't know if that'll be on. I will, I'll have to check with Alex. I don't know if he's going to sure stream it's that. Probably going to be. He'll record it. I streamed. Sure. Yeah, he'll for sure record it. But I, I think I have a how, back then too. How fitting! It's going to be on Halloween. Uh, well, thank you for coming by, Ben. That was that was fun. <laughs> yeah, this was fun. <laughs> he's he's he completely spun out. I wish that the technology was better. I think I think ninety nine percent of the problems are the Wi Fi in my hotel room here. Am I frozen now? You're frozen? We're all frozen? Can anybody hear me? Ben's frozen. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I there? surrender. Okay. Oh, you're back. There we He's are. Back, yeah. Back. All right. Well, never. well, thanks for coming by. I've got, uh, I've got, I've got stuff I got. I got to do. Thank you, everybody, for for coming by and hanging out. Sorry for, about the quality. I, I'm doing. I'm doing what I can. I'm doing what I can. I've got right. Old computer and uh, bad hotel Wi-Fi. What can What can I say? All right. That'll do it. Be continued. This is exciting. All right. All right. Well, yeah. Well, we'll. Well, I guess there will be a number two. Let's do it. <laughs> I love. Man, it's <laughs> it's fun watching you laugh at this. It really is. Well, oh, sorry, yeah, the one, <laughs> I did have one, yeah. Stay on point. This moment, yeah, <laughs> oh, goodness. I hadn't gotten that far in the video last night. <laughs> All oh, right, dear. see you all soon. Okay. Oh, man, you there? <laughs> I am, but it's not, right. we're still on. We're still on, hot mic? Yeah, it's.